But uh, I, anyways, I'm excited to be here, and I hope you are too. I, I don't feel like I've ever took in the pulpit this early, Pastor Larry. Amen. <laughs> I might get y'all. I might. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey y'all, we might get out of here early today. Who knows? Amen. I don't know if I got an hour and 15 minutes in me. Amen. No, I do. I could, I could, I could be up here all day. But as y'all know, I always try to finish about 11.45 anyways, so. Uh, but we might get out of here today. Who, who knows? Whatever the Holy Spirit wants. Amen. Because all I know is we got to go to Black Bear Diner after this. So the earlier, the better. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Turn to Acts chapter 3. Amen. Yes. It's, it's good food. Amen. They got these big old, remember Crystal, they got them big old pieces of bread they give you like this big, big old chunks of bread. I was like, that's the kind of bread we're going to start taking communion with right there. It's like this, it's like a big chunk of bread they give you, and you can just, you can share it. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's delicious. The way I would describe it, it's like a really hearty breakfast. It's like for people that love to eat, you know, it's a big plate, lots of food. So, and y'all know that's why we go there, because we love to eat. <laughs> that's one thing we like to do around this church, the nieces eat, amen? So and there ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I gotta watch my figure, Amen. Breakfast, lunch, they do everything. It's not too far, right there in Sugarland. Take a left on University. So they're getting some free advertisement today, amen? Just take a left right there on University, amen? <laughs> reasonable prices, too, yes, very reasonable. So I think we're going to go there today. Yeah, right? Yeah, we're going to we're gonna have to give them our church card. <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, we'll get started. You're on Acts chapter 3? Yes, Acts chapter 3. I need to get there myself. Too busy thinking about Black Bear over here. Yes, okay. All right. And before we start reading, I'm just going to share something real quick with y'all. And, uh, and we'll also pray. Why don't we pray before we get started as well? Uh, Father, we thank you, Jesus, for your, uh, your wonderful, awesome spirit father that is in this place and just i can feel your spirit in here father and i can feel your presence in here and you know we just thank you for waking us up this morning lord and allowing us to experience another day a day just in your presence a day in your love father we know that every day we wake up lord we have just a, a fresh bucket of grace just waiting for us every morning and you know, Lord, as, as the word goes forth today, as it uh, leaves my mouth, Lord, you know, I pray that it would enter into the hearts of everyone that's listening, and I pray that it would let us leave here changed, Father, new, just different than, we, than how we came in, Lord. And Father, most of all, I just want us to sense just uh, a spirit just of power in this place, as we leave here, I want, I want everyone to know the power that they have on the inside of them as we leave this place. Knowing that they are called, Father, to, they're called to cast out demons. They're called to heal sicknesses. They're called to do great things. So as we leave here today, Father, let them leave with that mindset. That's my prayer for this church today. Let them leave here with that mindset. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, thank you for that piano, Jonathan. I appreciate it, my brother. Now, I wanted to start by, I'm going to preach, I'm just going to start by saying, I'm going to preach something very, very simple and very practical for you guys today, okay? Sometimes we need a little simpleness and a little practicality in our lives, right? And uh, before I move on that, though, tell me if y'all know what I mean by this. How many of y'all know we have a lot of Christian sayings in the church, Amen. like things that us Christians like to say that may or may not really be true. Right. Like one of the things that Pastor Larry has shared before is that a lot of the things we like to say, Brother Albert, is, well, I'll do that if God is willing. You know, we kind of joke about that all the time, and somebody will say that in the church, and then we're like, no, God is willing. Like, I'll go to church tomorrow if God is willing. Well, I can go ahead and tell you, it's not a matter of whether or not if God is willing or not. I can tell you, He is willing <laughs> that you go to church. Amen? Amen? 
Or how many of you have ever said before, God is going to heal me, you know, if he's willing? No, God is willing to heal you. God wants to heal you. And I think, you know, what holds us back sometimes is that we don't really know whether or not, you know, we have that. It's like kind of like a doubt that's in us, Diane. You know, like we don't know if God really wants to heal us or not. But no, he is willing to heal you, right? So God is willing, church. All his promises are yes and amen, right? We know that. Uh, I can give you another simple one. So we're talking about just routine things that we say as Christians and we don't really think about. One of those is amen. We kind of throw that word around there a lot. Amen. Do y'all even know what the word amen means? So be it. So be it. Hey, y'all know. Amen. So be it. Or let it. It's, it's true. Some people say, right? So be it. And we kind of I'm not saying we use that word incorrectly, but if you think about it, we do just kind of throw that word around. Amen. Amen. You know, we just say it, but there really is power behind that word because you're saying, I agree, minister, or I, or, I agree with the word that you're sharing. And so Joseph Prince preached a message about that before, about the power of the amen. And you have to be careful what you're saying amen to, is what he says. Uh, some people, it's funny because... Uh, you know, at my old church, like the, the minister would just say something and it would be something negative and somebody would just be kind of looking down and be, amen. Well, you don't say amen to that part. You know, that's a negative part. It's just it just left their mouth because they're just used to saying it, you know. <laughs> so why? Why? Because he's just so used to saying it. Right. Amen. So that's one. And uh, I wrote down another one. Uh, some people and I've shared this with you all before. One Christian saying that we have is I am the church. And I've shared that with y'all before. And I know, I think there's a lot of people that still disagree with me on this, but technically that's not a correct saying. Saying I am the church is not correct because one person is not the church. Many people who come together are the church. And what, what happens is a lot of people say that, and I would bet that most people that say that are people, Elvira, who don't like going to church. So they use the excuse and say, I don't have to go to church because I am the church. I can stay home. I'm the church. That's not correct. The, in the Greek, the word church is an assembly, a congregation. So when we all come together, doesn't matter if we come together in this building or not. When we all come together, we are the church right. together, right? Not I, not just me alone, but we together are the church. You know, the scripture says that we are the body of Christ and we're also individuals. So individually, you are a temple because in the Old Testament, the temple is where God lived. And in the New Testament, where does God live? I'm going to look in the mirror, man in the mirror, right? God lives inside of me. And the Bible says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? So God lives inside of you. So we're temples, but we're not churches. When we come together, we make up a concept of the assembly, of the gathering of the church. You know, uh, a fun fact, in the book of Acts, it says that uh, in one town, I believe it was Ephesus, they gathered together a mob of people to go against Paul. So they riled up a big old mob to go against Paul and to drag him off. And in the Greek, that, that, that mob word that it uses there is the same word that we use for church. So they got a church together to go against Paul. So what am I saying? That, that word just means an assembly. It means a gathering together. And, but we know that we are the church when we come together, right? So that's just one that we use. But I'm going to give you another one today. And this is the common saying that I wanted to talk to you about. And I want you to realize the power that's in this phrase. Are you ready? The phrase we're going to talk about today is, in the name of Jesus. All right. Why don't y'all say that? In the name of Jesus. How do you say it in Spanish? En el nombre de Jesús. Amen. That's right. In the name of Jesus. I saw, I saw this funny video one time. Uh, I'm going to start off with a joke like Joel Osteen. Is that all right? Uh, I sent it to you, Pastor Larry. This lady, she, she had a cute little dog, a little brown dog with floppy ears. And uh, you can tell that the lady goes to church, you know. And she said, I'm going to pray for you right now because you've been having a lot of anger issues. And I know there's something inside of you that's keeping you from being a sweet dog, she said. (laughs) 
So she said, so in the name of Jesus, we're going to pray right now so that all that evil will leave. And she started praying for the dog. And what do you think the dog started doing? Growling. Growling, <laughs> Growling started barking and snapping. And then she just kept saying, in the name of Jesus. And then it was funny. And it was a funny video, you know, that she was just playing around. She's like, in the name of Jesus. And he was barking and, gr and growling. And then he stopped. And she's like, there, you see, it left. And, but it was funny because she was praying in Spanish and English. She was saying, in El nombre de Jesus, in Jesus' name. And the dog was just growling. It was, I thought it was a funny video. I busted out laughing. So some of y'all need to pray for them demons to leave your dog because they'd be, you know, biting at people's ankles and stuff like that. So. They got a demon. These be cast out in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> but how many of y'all know we use that phrase in church a lot, right? We use, the we use the phrase, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And we say that when we end our prayers, and, um, you know, we use that a lot. But I wonder, Diane, how many of us really understand the power of Jesus' name? And what does the Bible really mean, Pastor Larry, when it says, that they did this or they did something in the name of Jesus? You know, are we using that phrase and just kind of throwing it around, or do we really understand the power that's in the name of Jesus? You know, what does that even mean? Or is that just something we just say, you know? A lot of us, we just use that phrase only when we end our prayer. We say a prayer like we just did a minute ago, right? We, we give a prayer and then we say, in the name of Jesus. But what do we really mean by that? What does the name of Jesus actually mean? Well, the best thing, this is the way I'm going to present it to y'all. In Acts chapter 3, it talks about how the apostles in chapter 4, how they, they preached in the name of Jesus. And what we're going to do is we're going to read pretty much through chapter 4, and I'm going to pull out some things about this to show you about the power in Jesus' name. But I like to get context of, of my scriptures first. So we're going to start in chapter 3 and just read a few verses there, okay? So verse 1, let's start there. Are you all with me? Yes. All right, Acts chapter 3, verse 1, and we'll read a few verses in chapter 3. All right, so it says, Now Peter and John, they went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms for those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, they asked for alms. So here's this man laying at the temple, and he can't walk. And he was lame in his feet. Is that what it said, right? He was lame. He couldn't walk. He had to be carried everywhere. And just to give you all a quick history lesson, in those days, think about what it was like to be lame in your feet and not able to walk in those days. There were no such thing as wheelchairs back then. So, yeah, no electric wheelchairs. Pastor Larry didn't have that, that electric wheelchair he had. There was really no way to get around unless somebody carried you. And so I actually did some reading on it, and a lot of people believe that if you were lame in your feet in those days, that you were really, really badly cursed, and you pretty much had a death sentence on your life. Because if you're not able to walk and get around, how are you going to get your daily needs and stuff like that, right? So that's, this man was here sitting at the gate, and as we're going to find out later, he was 40 years old. He was, I believe he was, he was either 40 or over 40 years old, but he's sitting here at the gate, just doing what he knows to do, ask for alms, ask for something. And he saw Peter and John walking into the temple, and he said, you know, what, what do you have? Let me have something, right? Give me some money, as he knows how to do. And then at verse 5, or excuse me, verse 4, it says, And fixing his eyes on him with John and Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. So Peter said, look at me, look at us. And then he looked at them and he expected to get some money, right? And then it says, uh, verse 6, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. Amen. And then in the name of Jesus, so there's that phrase. Anytime, just make a mental note every time you see that phrase, in the name of Jesus, okay? He says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, and he lifted him up, and immediately 
His feet and his ankle bones received strength. Amen. So he got healed, right? Verse 8, a couple more verses. So he, leaping, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat bagging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So we just we witnessed a miracle right here, right? A man who had never walked got up and walked, and the people, they recognized it, Annie. They said, we know this man. He's never walked before, but we see him here now walking into the temple. And not only is he walking, but he's leaping. <laughs> he's jumping. He's got strength in his ankle. He's got strength in his legs. He's leaping, and he's praising God. And he's following them into the temple. Powerful miracle, right? Now, just one more verse. Look at verse 16. Verse 16. Just skip a few verses and look at that verse. It says, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So just look at the first part of that scripture. Let me ask you all a question. What was it that healed this man? I, I was looking for a different answer. The name, right? What does it say? And his name, his name made this man strong. And it does say, yes, you're right, through faith in his name, because we do have to put faith in the name, right? But notice that first part, Edward, it says it was his name that healed the man. If you take out that, that part that's in the commas, it would say, and his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Ah, so... There's power in the name, in the name of Jesus. How many, we all know, right? I'm, again, I know this is practical. It might be shallow to you. You're like, I know about the name of Jesus. But let's look at it a little bit closer today, right? Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Power, the, the name is what healed this man, the name of Jesus Christ. And we're going to figure out what that means. But now, here's the, the main part I wanted to get to in a... Acts chapter 4, look at verse 5. And we'll just read a couple verses real quick. So I, I read that because I wanted to give you all the background of what happened to this man, how he got healed. Because how many of y'all know your Bibles, they really weren't written in chapters. It was just one long scroll. And so actually chapter 4, it's not that... Uh, this whole story doesn't end in chapter 3. It actually goes on into chapter 4. So look at verses 5 and 7 now. Check this out. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were the family of the high priest, they were gathered together at Jerusalem. All right, so all the religious high priests, gathered together at Jerusalem, and when they had set them in the midst, they said, what happened was they arrested John and Peter, and then this is where we pick it up. Now they get them from prison, and they put them in the midst of the religious people. And it says, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Do y'all see that? Do y'all see how the words power and name are kind of used interchangeably right there because you already know the answer right what does it mean to do something in the name of Jesus it means that you do it in the power and the authority of Jesus so when you say in the name of Jesus what you're really saying is in the power of Jesus Christ be healed what you're really saying is in the authority of Jesus Christ I command you to be made whole that's what the name is, right? Like if you say, I come in my father's name, or I come in my boss's name, what are you saying? I come in the power and the authority of my boss's name. All right? So that's what the power is. I remember uh, when I used to uh, work in retail before I was a manager, 
Uh, my boss would sometimes tell me to go and tell somebody else to do something. And then I always had a problem with telling people what to do sometimes, you know, especially when I wasn't a manager yet. I didn't feel comfortable doing that. So what do y'all think I would tell them? Manager. The manager said, y'all, <laughs> that y'all need to do this, right? <laughs> yeah, the manager said, y'all got to do this. You know, I didn't go and say, y'all need to do this. I would say, hey, Mr. Mr. Jones said y'all need to do this. Why did I do that? Because I wanted them to know that I'm coming in the power or in the name of my boss. I didn't come in my own name. I was coming in his name, right? <laughs> and I wanted them to know because there's power and there's authority in that name, right? Just like in the name of Jesus. There's power and there's authority in the name of Jesus Christ today. And I think instead of just throwing it around routinely, I think we really need to, we really need to understand the words that we're using. We really need to understand the phrases that we're speaking Because if we are doing it just routinely, and if we are doing it just to throw out there, are we really accessing the power that's behind it? See, you have to know the power that's behind the name and the power that's behind the words that you're using in order for it to be accessed, right? To give you an example, when we always take communion, what's one thing that I always tell y'all to do? Don't do it just as another ritual. Because if, why am I saying that? Because if you do just take it and you don't really think about it, has anything really happened? Probably not, right? Because you're not really understanding the power that's behind it. But when you tie your faith to it and you understand the power of it, then you might see something happen, right? Then you will see something happen, I should say. It's the same thing when we say in the name of Jesus. It's not just a cute little thing that we add to the end of our prayers. We are saying that we might not be able to do this in our own effort, but we're coming in the name of Jesus Christ. We're coming in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. And by that authority, I'm telling you to be moved in Jesus' name. I'm telling you to be changed in Jesus' name. You see, uh, you don't have to turn there, but let me read you a a scripture real quick. Uh, Matthew 28, 18. Uh, You can go ahead and pull it up, Jonathan. Matthew 28, 18. I love what Jesus said here. He said, and Jesus came and he spoke to them saying what? All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And how many of y'all know Jesus sits at the top? All power and all authority has been given unto me. Come on, somebody. Power, authority has been been given to Jesus Christ. And bless God, we sit in Jesus Christ. Amen. We sit right up there with him in heavenly places. So more of y'all need to realize the place that you're actually sitting at. Where are you seated at today? Well, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. And if he's seated at the very top where all authority has been given unto him, that means that we have authority as well over the situations that try to come in our life too. Amen. That's why I don't understand, man, why we going around kind of half victorious, half defeated, half victorious. Really, we should be going around in full victory, Elvira, because where we're sitting and because of whose name we come in. We come in the name of Jesus Christ, where all authority and all power has been given unto him. Amen? That's where the true authority comes from. That's where the true power comes from. But let's continue reading that story. Um, So back in Acts chapter 4, look at verse, uh, verse 8 is where we left off. We're going to, like I said, we're just going to read a few verses in this chapter here. All right, Acts chapter 4, verse 8. It says, then Peter, so they asked him, by what name do you do this in? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, he said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, there's that phrase, the name. Okay, let's keep going. Whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. So again, pay attention to that part. It says, by his name, this man stands here before you whole. All right? They said, if y'all are going to 
bring us in here and judge us by something good we've done. Let it be known to you that it wasn't us who did it. It was the name of Jesus Christ who did it, right? Verse 11, this is the stone which was rejected by you builders and which has become the chief cornerstone. And then uh, we all know this scripture right here, good scripture. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Amen. That's the name that's given whereby we must all be saved, right? That's why, you know, we as Christians, we say things like, which is true, we say things like, you can't find salvation in any other religion out there. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. I guess me and Pastor Larry, the only people who believe that. You can't get saved by any other religion out there. All right? It's only through the name of Jesus. Jesus said, all the other doors are not real doors. He says, I'm the real door that leads you to the Father. And we, we stand in faith on that, and we believe that, right? You have to come through the name of Jesus in order to be saved. There's no other name under heaven or earth that's been given unto men where my, we must be saved, all right? It's not, by, uh, it's not by Buddha or anything like that or any of the other, other religions out there, any of the other gods you might think of. It's not by any of that, Any Jesus Christ came to reveal the true way to God. And what did he say? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but through me, right? And so he, he's the only name that's given under heaven and earth by whereby we must be saved, right? And then I told you, you know, notice that part where he says, by his name, this man stands here before you whole, right? So how are you going to get victory in life? Through the name of Jesus Christ. So here's what I'm trying to tell you all today. How many of you are using that phrase? First, let's talk about that. How many of you are actually using that phrase in the name of Jesus in your daily life? Amen. Come on. Yeah, let's see some more hands raised. Amen. Y'all use that phrase daily in your life in the name of Jesus. Y'all know y'all should be using that phrase, right? I'm not saying not to use that phrase, of course. I'm saying we do need to use that phrase more in our life, right? Whenever you're going through a tough situation, why don't you say, in the name of Jesus, be removed? Not by my power, not by my might, but in the name of Jesus, in the power and the authority of Jesus, I command my finances to be restored. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus, I command a job to fall into my lap in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, let my body be whole. In the name of Jesus, let this soreness leave my chest right now in Jesus' name, right? Why not? We need to be using that phrase more, but don't just use the phrase routinely. Actually know what you're saying when you say it. And all it takes is for you just to be a little more mindful of what that phrase actually means. You know, next time before you use that phrase, Leecha, before you say, in the name of Jesus, what I want y'all to do is just think about it for a moment before you say it. Take like five seconds and just think about it. Think about the power that comes from the name of Jesus. There's no other name given under, under heaven or earth. This is how I get my victory. This is how people got healed. This is what the disciples said. They spoke it in the name of Jesus. Jesus said himself, all authority is given unto me. Ever since that, ever since that day, they all started using the phrase, in the name of Jesus. You'll find many times in the New Testament where the disciples, they spoke that when they casted out demons and such, Brother Albert. They said, in the name of Jesus, be gone. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, take up your bed and walk. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus. There's only salvation in his name. Understand the power that's in it, right? And so, you know, they said, uh, Peter said that it's by the name of Jesus that this man got healed, right? And let's, let's continue reading, verse 13. All right, I, I like this chapter here, a very interesting chapter. Verse 13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And I've always loved that scripture too, Pastor Larry. Because it says that they saw the boldness in them. But it also, it says that they also saw that they were untrained and uneducated. 
Have any of y'all ever felt like that before? Like you're inadequate or like that you, you know, we, we've all felt that way, right? We've all felt inadequate. We've all felt untrained, like uneducated. But it says that they knew that they were uneducated and they knew that. But it says that they saw the boldness on them as well. And so how did they know that there was something going on? Because it says they realized that they had been with Jesus. Y'all see that part right there. So how are people going to understand your boldness and the power that you carry? Well, you got to be with Jesus. And they're going to see, I know that Brother Albert's been with Jesus. Because look at the boldness he's portraying. Look at the power he's walking in. I know that Licha has been with Jesus because look at the boldness she has. Look at the power she has. It's power that only Jesus can give us, right? Yeah. I've always liked that scripture, amen? They realized they had been with Jesus. And then in verse 14, it says, And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside... Out of, the, out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, what a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. So and he, they sent the disciples after they got done talking to them. They sent them outside, and then they started talking amongst themselves. They said, You know what? We, we can't deny that a miracle has been done here. And that has been done in the name of Jesus. So what are we going to do is what they're saying. We can't deny it. In verse 17, it says, But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them, that from now on they speak to no man in this name. Mm. Wow. So y'all see, they very nasty way to treat this situation, right? So we don't want this to spread any further. We don't want the name of Jesus to spread any further. So what are we going to do? We're going to threaten them so that they'll stop because we don't want it to go out anymore. Now, remember that phrase in this name, it means what? In the power and the authority of Jesus, right? So they said, we want to stop it before it gets any stronger. All right. So let's look at the next verse. Let's see what they do. They say, we're going to threaten them. They aren't going to speak in Jesus' name no more. All right, verse 18. So they called them back, and they commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. You see, are y'all seeing that phrase as much as I'm seeing it? Right, the name, the name, the name. And he says, but Peter and John answered them, and they said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. I love that part. So what are y'all going to do if somebody tells y'all to stop speaking in the name of Jesus? What are you going to tell them? I'm going to tell them. That's right. Go jump in the lake, right? <laughs> tell them, go on, because that, that's not going to happen, right? I cannot speak and say the things which God has showed me. That's why I'm glad to live in our country, because we have the freedom to speak about Jesus Christ. Amen. There's some countries where you cannot speak in the name of Jesus Christ. And, you know, if, if something like that ever happened to where the government rose up and said that y'all can't no more talk about Jesus, me and the government are going to have a problem. I'm telling you that right now, because that's something that I will. That's a hill that I would die on right there, because I have to speak in the name of Jesus. I can only speak what he's wanted me to speak and the mission that he's given me, right? But I'm so glad that we have freedom right now, you know, to speak what we want. Y'all know in Canada, you cannot speak against certain kinds of sins over there. They'll let you talk about God, but there's certain sins that you cannot speak against over there. If you do, you're going to go to jail. See, that's just our neighbors to the north, right? That's Canada. But here we have freedom to say whatever we want. You can start any religion you want here in America. If you want to worship potatoes, you can do that here in America. You're welcome to do that, the first church of the spuds, right? <laughs> You're welcome to worship anything you want here, but we have freedom to worship. You know, that's why, like, you know, when all that stuff happened, like with COVID, y'all remember they were asking people, you know, not to gather and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of Christians had a problem with that, uh, you know, and they because they didn't want churches to get together because they were afraid that, you know, the virus was, was going to spread if they do that. 
I didn't really see it that way. You know, like the government wasn't telling us that we couldn't speak in the name of Jesus. They were just saying, hey, please don't gather because there's a sickness going around right now, you know. So that situation, you know, is, was just a big mess. But if they had come and they had said, y'all cannot speak in Jesus' name at all, or you cannot, you cannot talk about Jesus at all, then I would have had a problem with that. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And that's, I would have stood right there with you fighting that government. That's what the Constitution says we're supposed to do, right? If the government rises up and starts becoming a tyranny and starts trying to take away our rights, we have rights, we have duty and responsibility to stand up and get rid of that government. We the people do, right? Come on, talking to y'all about the Constitution today, amen? Because we have the right and the freedom to worship and, and speak however we want in Jesus' name, right? But you see, in those days, you couldn't, of course, in, in the disciples' days, they did not have that freedom to do it. They had to do it secretly. And they didn't want the message of Jesus Christ to, to, to the Jews didn't want the message of Jesus Christ to spread because they were going to lose followers. And so they said, let's threaten them. Let's make sure that they don't speak in Jesus' name. This is why the Christians were killed, right? This is why the Christians were beaten, because they were speaking in his name. But I love what Peter said. He said, whether it's, whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, he's like, you be the judge. But we can't help but speak the things which God has shown us, the things we've seen and heard, right? Yeah. And what did the Jewish people do? So when they had further threatened them, they, did, they said, now I done told you. Don't speak in that name, right? They further threatened them. And let's see the next part of that verse. So when they had further threatened them, rest of verse 21. Is it on there, Jonathan? Yeah, yeah. They let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. So the reason why they didn't punish them further, Mary, was because they had saw the response that the crowd had got from it. And then they saw that the crowd was glorifying God for it. And if they had punished them, well, they would have been bad because the people saw the miracle that had happened, right? And verse 22, it says, for, for the man was over 40 years old on whom the miracle of healing had been performed. And I always wondered, you know, Mary, like, why did it say that at the end of this story? You know, why, why, did, it, why did the writer of Acts feel that it was necessary to include his age in there well because it's real simple they just wanted to show that well y'all remember a, a, like about a week ago i had said that the average lifespan for a person in jesus days and the disciples days was like in the late 20s right so if you lived beyond that and you went further beyond that it was kind of i wouldn't i won't say a miracle but it was abnormal for you to live longer than that because they didn't have all the technology and the medicine and stuff like that that we have today, right? So it says the man is 40 years old because it wants to show you. It wants to say, hey, look, this man was well above age. He was older. He was lame in his feet. And that makes the miracle even more powerful if you think about it, you know? He's 40 years old, and he was healed. Like the miracle of uh, God giving a baby to Sarah. Why was that so miraculous? It's not, it, people have babies every day, but why was it miraculous for her? Because she was 90 years old, right? 99 years old. Yeah, how many, and like I said, how many of y'all want to have a baby at that age? Start all over again. Heck no, right? So the age, amen. <laughs> the age makes it a powerful miracle. Just like in this man, just like in this man. He, was, he was older, he had health problems, he wasn't even supposed to be living past... 20, oh, the late 20s, but he still lived, and God still healed him even in that, that, that broken state that he was in, weak from the day he was born, couldn't walk, and now he's over 40, and now God has healed him. Man, that's something, that's something to celebrate about, amen? That's, that's like, wow, there's, there's no other way to see that but as a miracle, right? So speak the word of God no matter what, amen? Now, uh, let me show you this scripture real quick. I wanted to, we can end with that chapter. Just notice all the different parts about the name of Jesus that was spoken. You know, there's power in his name. People were healed in the name. It was the name of Jesus that healed them. All right. Now look at Ephesians chapter one, verse 15. 
And as we turn there, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Now, a moment ago, I had said that, you know, we kind of use that phrase and we a lot of times we just say it and we don't really think about what we're saying, right? We don't understand the power that's behind the name of Jesus, and we just say it. And I said that because how many of y'all know it's possible to have faith and it's possible to be saved, but it's also possible to not know the power that's inside of you. You know, in other words, you can be saved, you can have faith, you know, all that good stuff, But I wonder how many people out there are walking around in faith and saved, but don't really understand the power that they have inside them. You understand what I'm saying? It's it's you it's it's just like with the name of Jesus. It's easy for us to speak that phrase. It's easy for us to speak the name of Jesus over our situations, but not really know the power that's behind the name of Jesus. Right. And I'm going to show you in this scripture here. Paul brings it out very beautifully here. In verse 15, it says, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. So again, Paul's prayer, the, these Ephesians, these are, think about this for a moment, guys. These Ephesians are people who have already given their life to the Lord. You know, they've already, they've already been saved, Patrick. You know, they've already, put in their, they've already put their faith in Jesus. And now Paul is saying this, you guys have put your faith in Jesus Christ. I give thanks for you. He says, now I pray that, you, that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and that he would give you a revelation and the knowledge of him. You see, I don't want people just to come to church. I don't want people just to, just to say a prayer and get saved. That's great, but that's the starting point. Amen. Now God wants you to have a revelation of him. Awesome. Now God wants Jesus Christ to be formed in you. Amen. He wants you to have wisdom now. You see, that, that's the problem I have with with. with this culture sometimes that we we create in the church like it's just about getting numbers in the church or it's just about getting people to come that's great but more importantly we have to also grow in the lord because if you don't ever grow and you don't ever mature then you ain't ever going to have power and you ain't ever going to change the world like you're supposed to you understand so it's all about having the power and understanding the power and the wisdom that's inside of you right so there's more to this Christian life than, than, just, than just church. We, we talk about that a lot here, right? It's good to come to church. We want y'all to come to church. But there's more to it than just that, right? And how many of you know you can come to church and not hear a darn thing as well, right? I almost said the other word. No, I'm just kidding. You, you can come to church and not get anything, right? That, that's, and so why? You're not getting the power that's coming forth. You're not exercising the power that's actually in you. And that's what Paul is saying here. He's saying, I, I, I want you to have a wisdom, and I want you to have the revelation and the knowledge of him. So when you get Jesus, you have to see Jesus. You have to see Jesus formed inside of you. Amen. All right? He wants to mold you, the Bible says. He wants to sculpt you like you're the clay, and he wants to turn you into a beautiful pot. Amen? In verse 18, he says, we know this scripture very well, right? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, I believe is what it says, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. I want you to know the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Some of, some of us got a million dollars in the bank, and we don't even know it, if I can speak it like that. We got a million dollars, but we don't even use it, right? And what is the exceeding greatness, look at this part, of his power toward us who believe. So who has power? Amen. And and who are we? The believers. That's right. We're the believers. God has power, but the power is for believers. That's right. We were kind of talking a little bit about that uh, last night, Pastor Larry and I, 
and we were just kind of mentioning, uh, this might seem a little rough. This might seem like a lot of people won't like this. But the promises of protection and power and abundance is not for the unbeliever. I know a lot of people don't like that. But the power is really for you because you believe. The Bible says the inheritance of Abraham belongs to his seed, which is who? The believers, the, the people who have entered into faith in Jesus Christ. So we can pray. For, let me give you all. This might be kind of a bad example. But we can pray that God would protect our loved ones who have not come to him. But that doesn't mean that they might have that protection because they have to enter into the promises of God. They have to enter into the abundance of God. Am I, am I wrong or am I, that's true, right? The promise is for those who believe. But you see, we have a lot of believers sitting in the church who don't know about the power and the promises that they have, and they don't exercise that power and those promises. I believe that, I believe that God can bless somebody who doesn't believe. Don't get me wrong. I believe that God can do miracles and can protect and can do things for unbelievers. But the promise of protection, the promise of abundance, the promise of power is just for you who believe. You know, I would rather have power promised to me than not really sure if I'm going to have power or not. Do you understand? And that's why we ought to be shouting and thanking God in here today because we're believers who have power. Amen. And that's what, that's what Paul is talking about right here. He's, when I read that scripture the first time, it's like, that little part that says, has exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. Like, it just jumped out of the pages at me. And this is like one of my favorite scriptures here. He has greatness of power toward us who yes. believe. Yes. We have power, right? According to the working, it says, of his mighty power. So notice the, all these phrases you see here, right? There's power for those who believe. And, you know, we have that working power. And verse 20, he says, which he worked in Christ, that power, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. Yeah. You know that in Greek, um, hopefully this then throw you for a loop, but in Greek, the word for power and authority, it's also translated as a right sometimes. The word right, when you see right hand or right, sometimes that, that same Greek word, power, is translated as right. Because we've, we've taught you all this before, right? To say that you're at somebody's right hand means that you're at their, their power, right? You're, you're their right-hand man, your power and authority, if you're seated with Christ, right? So seated with him at his right hand and, uh, excuse me, right hand in, let's see the next part, the heavenly places. That's where we're seated, right? Now look carefully. Far above all principality, far above power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that age which is to come. Do y'all see that there? So now we see the name in there as well. So where is Christ seated? He's seated in heavenly places above every principality, every power, every dominion. That's where Christ sits at the very top. And again, where are you? You right there with him. In heavenly places, you sit it at the very top with him. So this kind of goes back to what I had said at the beginning. You might feel at times like you're on the bottom of the totem pole, but you're really not. You're really seated there at the top. Now, you can feel like you're low. You know, you ever felt like this small before? Like you're, you can feel like you're really low, and people might make you feel like you're on the bottom, but that's not what God says about your life. Come on, somebody. God says you're seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. And we need, really need to look at the scripture because look at what it's saying. In that place, it's above every principality. It's above every power. This is why I say things like demonic possession cannot come upon you as a believer. Amen. Why do I say that? Because if you're seated with Christ that's above every other power, which would include demonic powers, then how can that power have dominion over you if you're above it? You understand what I'm saying? I believe that the devil can oppress you, you know, and, and can get on your nerves and stuff like that. But why am I saying this? Because we do have some Christians that believe that, you know, there, there are demons out there that can take you and put you in submission and, and things like that. And, and, you know, you can be under their foot, so to speak, right? But that's not the way it is, right? 
that can't happen. Why? Because we are seated above every power, above every principality. Really think about that. We're seated in a very, very high place, right? But again, you have to, you have, you guys have to be conscious and you have to be aware of this power that you possess. You have to be conscious of the power that's in the name of Jesus. It's not enough. I'm, let me tell you all this now. Throw you another curveball. Y'all ready? It's not enough just to say it. We put a lot of emphasis on saying in the name of Jesus. But you really have to be conscious of the power that's behind it as well, right? How many of y'all know the story of the, the seven sons of Sceva, right? They try to cast out the demon from the man, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. Why? Because they said, be gone in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches about. <laughs> and then what did the demon tell them? They said, Paul, we know. We also know Jesus, but who are you? Ripped their clothes off, and they ran out the temple, right? Naked, the Bible says. That's what the Bible, the Bible says that. It's in there in the book of Acts. But you see, they didn't understand the power. And they tried to do something that they couldn't do because they didn't understand the power that's in the name of Jesus. Y'all understand that? Amen. So I'm going to give you one more scripture, all right? Uh, Colossians chapter 3 because I wanted to bring out another point about this, uh, this topic in the name of Jesus, right? Colossians chapter 3, and we'll be finished. What do you know? I am going to finish at 1145, amen? Praise God, amen. Cowboys ain't playing till tomorrow, so. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Before, we, uh, b before I, I read it, um, I also wanted to bring out this point to y'all. You know, we're, we're talking about the name of Jesus, but I also don't want you to get in this place where you feel like I have to say it in order for something to happen, okay? Uh, because there are plenty of times in the New Testament where the disciples would cast out demons, and they did it without saying, in the name of Jesus. Jesus didn't say, in my name or in, in the name of Jesus. He would just say, be gone right? Come out of him, and the devil would leave. So if I can give y'all a little homework, this is what I want y'all to do. I want y'all to practice using that word, that, that phrase, in the name of Jesus, and I want you to do it with power, right? I want you to really understand it, but I also want you to practice not using it, too. So y'all understand that? I want you to try to do both. So whenever you feel, let's say you start getting a headache, let's say you wake up tomorrow with a headache. Pick either one, whichever one you want to do. But don't feel like you have to say, in the name of Jesus. If I don't say, in the name of Jesus, I ain't going to leave. That's not it either. What, what matters is the power and the faith that's behind it. Yeah, that's and right. if you understand the power and the faith that you have, you can literally just say, be gone, and your headache can leave. Did you know that? You can literally just speak to something, be moved, and it can move. Because you, in a sense, you are, you are doing it in the name of Jesus because you're not... We, we put a lot of emphasis on verbally saying in the name of Jesus. We even do that when it comes to baptisms. Y'all know about that before? We've, we've, taught, we've been taught about baptism. There's a lot of people that say you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus, or there's a lot of people that say you got to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm really not convinced that the disciples, when they baptize people, literally said, verbally said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Think about it. They had to do that to 3,000 people. You think they had to say, in the name of in the name? Did they do that to everyone? The Bible does, the, there's not one scripture that says, y'all looking at me crazy now. There's not one scripture that says that Peter or any of them verbally said, in the name of Jesus, when they baptized him. Ah, what the Bible actually says is they baptized them in the name of Jesus. What does that mean? In the power of Jesus. So how do we know that they said anything at all when they did it? Do you all understand what I'm saying? It's, I'm, all I'm, I'm not saying yes or no. All I'm saying is it's quite possible that they just dunked one, dunked another, dunked another, and let them go on. But we say in the name of Jesus when we do it today, right? Because that's just our, that's just our ritual. That's just our routine. Or you can be like uh, Brother Edward, right? What, what did the pastor tell you? He's like, you don't know what name I baptized you in when you went under... Because you were under the water. How can you hear what name I said when you're under the water, right? I could have baptized you in my name. <laughs> Isn't that, didn't he say something like that? You don't know what name it's under, right? The, the point I'm trying to make is this. 
we put a lot of emphasis on verbally saying it, and, and that's okay. But you also need to be comfortable with not saying it and just knowing the power that you possess as well. Do y'all feel me on that? Right? So what, don't worry. When I baptize you, I'm going to verbally say, in the name of Jesus, all right? For your comfort and your safety, I'm going to do it. But just know it's quite possible. We've even talked to Scott Stripling, the guy that's, because a lot of y'all don't believe me when I say stuff, but y'all believe somebody else that comes up here. But Scott Stripling even said that himself. We talked to Scott Stripling, and he said, it's quite possible that they didn't say anything at all when they baptized them. And they actually had many baptisms in those days. They were getting baptized daily. That's, a, that's for another day, though. Yeah, go ahead, Pastor Larry. Yeah. I want to say, yeah. Uh, the, like, the scripture you read, I think it was in Acts, is yeah. that uh, his, name, his name, that Jesus, that they, that Jesus' name went throughout all the world. Yes. Well, if you look at the New Testament, do y'all know that there's more people in the, there's other people in the Bible named Jesus besides Jesus Christ? Mm. Amen. Amen. So, Right. Jesus. The word name there means authority. It's the authority of, and the authority of Jesus. So when the ruler said his name has gone throughout all the world, mm -hmm. it's not like they never heard that name. Right. What they're saying is that y'all are taking his, y all, y all, his authority, his power, his kingship, is what y'all are sharing. Yes. His authority, that it's no longer Caesar's kingdom, but it's Christ's kingdom. Right. Huh? That's so good. I'm just kind of helping with Jamie because it's yeah. not And his authority. Amen. That's good, Pastor Larry. I'm glad you brought that point out, man. That's, that's so true. Uh, because it's, I, I put that here at the end of my sermon because I wanted y'all to, I, I wanted to get the point across that you don't have to have to say it. It's good if you exercise it, but there are some people who do say in the name of Jesus, but again, they just, there's no power in it because they're just doing it ritually. So the important thing is that you understand the power and the authority that you're doing it in, and you don't have to verbally say that. Amen. And uh, it's, again, it's quite possible that they didn't even do it when they baptized people, all right? So, uh, but just read this last scripture, and then we'll be done, okay? <coughs> Colossians 3, 17. And, uh, okay, yeah, this is uh, Colossians 3, 17. It says, and whatever you do in word or deed, so anything that you do, right, word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So anything we do, we're supposed to do it in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. So whenever you go to Black Bear, you should say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to Black Bear, right? When you drive your car, you drive your car in the name of Jesus. Question, do you verbally say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to drive my car? No, you don't. But are you doing it in the name of Jesus? Yes, because what does this scripture mean? When it says, do it all in the name of Jesus, it means to do anything you do in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ, all right? We don't have to verbally say, in the name of Jesus, after everything we do, right? The scripture that I thought about with this one was how Paul said, in him we live and move and we have our being. So in Jesus, we're, we are in Jesus Christ. So, so anything that we do is in Jesus Christ. When we're in Jesus, we're in his power. We're in his authority. So anything we do, we do it in his power and his authority. Do you all understand that? So because we are in Jesus Christ, right? So anything you do, whatever you do, no matter what it is, do it all in the name of Jesus. But the point of this message is just to wake you up. I, want you, I wanted to just get you all thinking about that phrase that we use. And I wanted you to, to think about really putting some power and some, some, some mm behind it, you know, whenever you speak it. Really understand what in the name of Jesus actually means. Let's, uh, let's not just use it as a ritual, but let's use it and really understand the power that's behind it. Amen, somebody. Amen. All right. Let's all stand. 1148. Look, I'm doing good. Amen. Amen, somebody. Ready for black bear, right? <laughs> We're going to go eat black bear in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes. All right. Well, yes, yeah, since we, we have a little bit of time, I'll, we'll do some prayer requests today. Okay. Anybody have any prayer requests? Yeah, Annie. That's right. Yeah. Mike, uh, Mike is sick right now. That's why he's not here. So let's, let's stand together and pray for Mike. Yeah, Denise. Oh, okay. 
Oh, shoot. Dang, double pneumonia. Okay, yes, we're going to pray for that. Very serious. Yes, Leecha. Uh, like Kathy. Kathy, okay, yes. Okay, okay, yes, we'll pray for Kathy. Amen. Okay. Lord knows I need. For your mom? Okay, Albert, you got it, yes. Pray for my daughter who's sick, got COVID. Okay. It was pretty bad. Yes, okay, I remember you talking about that this morning. Okay, yeah. So, yes, we have a lot of needs here today, and, um, you know, just, hey, God can heal anything, right? Yeah. So we, we need to stand and, hey, let's, let's practice what we learned today, okay? When we pray for these needs, we're going we're gonna to do it in the name of Jesus. We're going to do it in the power and the authority of Jesus. We're not just going to say that at the end of our prayer. The whole prayer is going to be in the name of Jesus, if y'all understand what I mean. All right, so let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak your power and we speak your authority, Lord. And, Father, we declare your victory over these situations. We declare your power. We declare, Lord, your glory. And we declare, Father, your awesome authority over these situations. Lord, we speak and we declare that Mike is healed in the name of Jesus. We believe it and we declare it that he is healed even right now as we are speaking. Be healed in Jesus' name. And we speak over Denise's grandmother with the, the double pneumonia, Father. We rebuke double pneumonia in the name of Jesus. And I declare healing. And I say be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the power of God, be healed in Jesus' name. And for Kathy, for Leach's sister-in-law, we speak right now. You know that need, Father. You know what it is that you know, she's going through, what she's battling. And Father, we declare just peace in that situation. We speak peace, power, and authority in that situation. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. For Albert's mom, in Jesus' name. You know the need, Lord. We speak your power and your authority in Jesus' name. We declare that that need is, is made whole that it's repaired, whatever needs to be repaired, whatever needs to be healed, whatever needs to be fixed, we speak that you fix it in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. And for Mary's daughter battling that situation, we rebuke the sickness, God. We rebuke the pain. We rebuke it all in Jesus' name. And Lord, we know that you know sickness and, and illness is not of you, so, Father, we, we speak to be healed in Jesus' name. We declare, even right now as we're speaking, that your mighty hand is going forward and touching her and touching all of these needs that we spoke over. We believe it, God, because we stand in your faith and we stand in your power, God, and we exercise the authority that you've given us in the name of Jesus. And, Father, as we leave this place today, we declare, we just declare your victory this week, God. We declare, Father, your peace. And Lord, we, we just thank you, Father, that you've you brought us a mighty long way, God. And we stand here in a beautiful place in you, seated with you in heavenly places. So, Father, we know that this week is going to be awesome, Lord. And we just thank you for what you're doing in this church. You know, continue to bless the offering and just continue, you know, to watch over the needs of this church in Jesus' name, Father. We thank you that you've watched over us and that you're, uh, you're protecting us, Lord. You've been doing mighty things through this church and, and these people, God. So we thank you for it, Lord. And Lord, we just bless you and we honor you for all you're doing. We know it's going to be an awesome service on Wednesday as well. Thank you, Jesus, for protecting us, watching over us. And we pray and we ask all this in the name of Jesus. In the church said, amen. Why don't we all say that together? Let's say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Y'all are dismissed.